talk this morning. Anyhow, we've got a very practical passage. And it's subtitled, Further Opposition to the Rebuilding, Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6 from verse 1. When the word came to St. Barat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of their enemies, that, that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates. St. Barat and Geshem said to me this message, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Arno. But they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messages to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and I cannot come down, go down. Why should the work stop while well, I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message. And each time I gave them the same answer. Then the fifth time, Sambalat sent his aid to me with the same message. And in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says that it is true, that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to the reports, you are about to become their king, and have even appointed prophets to make this pro proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king. So come, let us confer together. I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. They were all trying to frighten us thinking, their hands will get too weak for the work, and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. One day I went to the house of Shemia, son of Dalia, the son of Mahat Abel, who was shut in at his home. He said, let us meet in the house of God, inside the temple, and let us close the temple doors, because men are coming to kill you. By night they are coming to kill you. But I said, Should a man like me run away? Or should one like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that a that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, O oh my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophetess Nodiah and the rest of the prophets who have been trying to intimidate me. So the war was completed on the 25th of Elo, Elo in, the fifth, in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Also, in those days, the nobles of Judah were sending many letters to Tobiah, and replies from Tobiah kept coming to them. For many in Judah were under oath to him, since he was son-in-law to Shechaniah, son of Ara, and his son Jehoahanan had married the daughter of Mishulam, son of Berechiah. Moreover, they kept reporting to me his good deeds and then telling him what I said. And Tobiah sent letters to intimidate me. So far the reading.
Now text verses verses 14 and 16. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat for my God because of what they have done. Remember also the prophetess Nerodiah and the rest of the prophets who have been trying to intimidate me. When this idea so the wall was completed, this work had been done with the help of our God. Our building and work has been done with the help of our God. This is our text verse. Glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Our text is about attacks by enemies on the church of God. And we've heard it yesterday about the attacks, the aggressive attacks and the killing of children, Christian children in Nigeria. But these attacks are becoming more so intensified by the day. They are normally directed at us. The true church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Against the word of our Lord, the worship service where God is in the central of all. We are living today in quite a safe country. Australia, we are grateful for this. But we need to be aware in a safe country like this as well. Sometimes the truth of the Bible is abandoned by heresy. Like the prophets Shemaiah in our Bible reading. The attacks are very subtle. They are persecuted. But where the denial and ignorance of Jesus are the, are the highest. The ignorance atheism make our task challenging. Also the mocking voices that ridicule Jesus. When we are living in a world like this, it can be very confusing for our children. Because all their mates are doing this. What can be wrong with the world? They can ask. Everyone is having a good time today. And we have to be in church. Look out there, shopping, fishing. There's no fire raining from heaven on there. But this exactly. And to reason like this is the spirit of Satan working in this world. This is the world in our sin that still attacks us. The Bible really tells us to stand strong in these times. To come even closer to the Lord. In times when you are feeling far from the Lord, we should then come to church. To be encouraged by the word of God, the fellowship of the believers, to pray for one another, to encourage one another. This is what church service is all about. To be encouraged by the word of God. To hear the word of God alone. So the scriptures could be explained to us all. And that we can hear, so says the Lord. But beloved congregation, take note. We are a growing congregation. Busy with building God's kingdom and God's church. But it will call for intensified assaults of Satan. And so we were warned in 1 Peter 5 verse 8. Be alert and of sober mind. 
Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. See our passage. We need to go back to Nehemiah 4. Sambalat, the Horonite, was furious. We can see the work of the devil as well. The devil will be furious when the word of God is preached, when there's progress. In God's kingdom. But he could not do anything. Because Nehemiah had the king's permission to rebuild the walls. Therefore he used different tactics to attack the confidence of the people of Judah. He together with Tobiah Ammonite was his ally at his side, ridiculed and mocked the Jews. But look again at Nehemiah's tactics. Sometimes we're getting angry. Nehemiah went back to the Lord. This is a golden trait for the whole book of Nehemiah. He prayed to his Lord. Yes, our God. The Lord is in control. It's the Lord's work. Enemies were mocking with the Lord's work and the Lord is not to be mocked. Galatians 6 verse 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reads what he sows because it's about God's glory. Glory. This is our mission. And the violation against God's work is unforgivable. And so the Amayan people continued with their work. But the enemies of God and his work also continued with their work of hate. Tax on the people of Judah. First to ridicule, to mock. Then more visible. They wanted to attack the people of Judah. But Nehemiah posted the guard day and night to meet this threat. And he said, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. Fight for your families. We had this in the preaching as well. Fight for your sons and daughters. Your wives, your home. That it can be instructed to God according to God's work. Because it's God's work and He will support them. But still, this was not the end of the enemy's efforts. And I can tell you today that Satan will do anything to destroy the work of God. And you can see the trends today still. You can read it. Like Nigeria, sometimes it's so physical. Visible, killing children. If you were in the sermon about two weeks ago, we read about Manasseh, who sacrificed his children. He will kill children. He did it from the first of time with Moses. Killing of the firstborn sons, the new, of all the sons in the Nile, led on Jesus to kill Jesus. But the Lord made Joseph and Mary to flee to Egypt. He will do anything, but he couldn't. Jesus was born, he died for our sins. It is arisen. Now chapter 6, these attacks continued. It's got another angle. It was now against Nehemiah himself as the leader of the people. Because without a leader, the people of Judah would be scattered without any direction. As a session, we realize this importance as well. That's why we had our training yesterday, where the Lord sharpened and renewed us in His service. Because the Lord appointed elders and deacons to act as leaders and servants of this congregation. And the task in short is that I should preach the word of God. To admonish. To comfort. That the elders should comfort visiting Christ's sheep. 
the deacon's task is to visit K, comfort and K, that none of the community of believers is lost. Beloved, we need your constant prayers for this. Constant. Because we believe and you were charged and you promised that we were all appointed by God. So we have been called and equipped by Christ and His Word. And we do not carry our duties out based on our own abilities, but as a representative of Christ acting in His name. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. Put us back in Australia. Egalitarian society. Everyone is equal, who's good. But still, the Lord, according to His word, appointed leaders. What should our attitude be toward these office bearers? Even in an egalitarian society like Australia. Right through the Bible, it teaches us to show respect to the leaders of the church because they were appointed to God. Because as if you obey God. So, we should accept them in our homes if we accept God, if they visit us. Make time for them. We must obey them. Because of the word of God, they come with the word of God. Because they go, they protect the faithful but also they will be accountable for their actions or the lack thereof by God himself. And so the elders will govern, guard against false teachings like the prophet Shemaiah in our Bible reading. And they meet to discuss the state of the congregation. But there were attacks on Nehemiah and I want you to see this three points. Attack one. Nehemiah was invited to meet with the enemies. They intended to harm him. And he refused. Through logic. Some ballot. Geshem. Geshem sent him this message. Come let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. Ono was in an open, unprotected valley about 30 kilometers of northwest from Jerusalem, outside the borders of Judah, neutral ground. Sometimes the Lord gives us this logic not to do this, to make it practical for our children not to go to places in, sit in the city where it's not safe. And you as parents do not allow your children to go to that places. Because it will not be safe for your children. That's logic. Do not go to places where you would not go yourself. Logic. The Lord gave us all of it. Some he gave more. We might have known they were scheming to army. And so he sent messages to them with this reply, I'm carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should a work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Quite polite. Four times he sent him the same message. Each time he gave them the same answer. Brings us to attack two. Some ballots in his aid to Nehemiah with the same message. In his hand was an unsealed letter. So he reported among the nations and Geshem said it's true that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. Now he was using the tactic of fear. Fear of what can be, what can become. Good tactic to use in politics as well. If you don't vote for me, this will become chaos. 
Sometimes it's two. Now this report will get back to the king. So come, let us meet together. In my letter today was short. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. It's not the truth. To read your circumstances of life. Know what's happening in the world. Be aware. Do not be afraid, Jesus said, about what can happen. Maybe an exam. Maybe an interview. Maybe my health. An operation. Because we are on the Lord's good hands. He prayed, strengthen my hands. Jesus said himself, Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food, and the body not more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And yet we worry. We're getting depressed about all the sorrows of life and what can be. It even makes us sick. We need to trust. Nehemiah took his refuge in the Lord. He prayed, Now strengthen my hands. Brings us to attack free. Again, direct. And Satan is so good at this. Enemy, this attack was more cunning. It was against Nehemiah's person. To discredit him under the nation. To discredit his leadership. To gossip about him. And his name. And so the false prophet Shemaiah was used to predict that Nehemiah would be killed in the night. Shemaiah was an ally of Tobiah the Ammonite. And he pretended for a prophet. It's God's word. So that gave him some credibility. But Nehemiah's life was in danger and he tried to persuade Nehemiah to take refuge in the temple. But there was an angle. If you don't know the word of God, there will always be an angle. Satan will come with the Bible in his hands. The Lord warned us about it. The Sermon on the Mount, Jesus Christ. There will be many false prophets among you. They will tell you stories. Good stories. Do Timothy 4. And a lot of people will gather because it's pleasing to the ears. Then you will know it's the end of times. But it's not a truth. Therefore, the prophet's word should be measured to the word of God. Nehemiah was not a priest or a Levite to go to the temple. It was forbidden to him. There's a reason that he has a cupbearer of the king and also because of the, the harem. He was the eunuch. He couldn't be there. And the law clearly forbid him. Deuteronomy 13 verse, verse 1 to 4 we read, If a prophet of one who foretells you by dreams appears among you and announces to you a sign or a wonder, and if the sign of or wonder is spoken or take place, and the prophet says, Let us follow other gods, gods you do not have known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the word of the prophet or a dreamer. Paul said it, even if it's the word of an angel, and it's not in accordance with the word of God, you should not do this. The Apostle Paul. 
Again, our passage here in Deuteronomy, the Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart, with all your soul. It's the Lord your God you must follow, and him you must revere. We might choose to be rather obedient to God, not to the world, not to the people, rather to God. I realize that God did not send that prophet, but he went to God and asked for God's protection. And the Lord protected him. The wall was completed. Satan used this tactic many times to discourage someone's leadership. We will do this with the Bible. Be of sober mind, we have heard tomorrow. Open your eyes, directed to Jesus. Measure the words to see if it's from God. And then the comforting. Because it's the promise of the Lord as well. That the wall or the house of the Lord will one day be completed in the new Jerusalem. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence. Because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Satan backed off. The Lord gave the victory. Beloved dear Lord Jesus Christ, we see and experience now the peace of the Lord's kingdom, God's victory. The Lord is still protecting us. Though the world power seems to take over. Global recession, many things. We can know God is in control. The work was completed. And we need to look back. We need to see how the, God, how the Lord fulfilled His promises. How the Lord preserved His church through centuries. There were heresies. The Roman heresies of the Roman Catholic Church. But then the Reformation came. Later in the Reformation, there were the heresies of the Anabaptists. But the confessions were written. Always to come back to the word of God. And the spirit of the time will always tell you to indulge in your pleasures. To do what you like. But no. We must serve God. In prayer we can go to him for strength. If these attacks are present. In faith, we will be strengthened by the Spirit and the Word of God. In Him, we will find rest and peace. And not even the sins and the pleasures and the temptations of this world. And Satan can harm the church. We read this in Revelation 12, verse 16. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river. That the dragon, that's the devil, had spewed out of his mouth. We need to stay near Christ, here on earth, daily, daily repent. Satan cannot harm us. He wants you to believe he can. He cannot. Because all his plan and temptations are in vain. Should we worry about rumors of war, global recession, more job losses, the persecution of his church? No. Because the Lord is in control. Jesus saved us. We don't even have to fear death anymore. And through his Holy Spirit, he poured heavenly gift in his members. And he protects and he serves, preserves us in his power. Protects against the enemies. That threaten his church. I can tell you that. Don't think that the Christian Reformed Churches of Australia are free from these attacks. If we are a true church, Satan will, will come in all his might and power to do the, just this. To devour every one of us. To devour your children. It will be for heresies, whatever subtle method he can or will use. But because of God's providence, we are safe. 
so that we can offer strong resistance. We will never faint, and we will not be left behind. We will not perish because Christ gives his church until he comes again. Gives rest and strength and through the preaching and observance of our worship. And he will cast all his, all his and our enemies into everlasting condemnation. But take me and all the believers with him in heavenly joy and glory. When we appear for the judge one day, we will hear you are forgiven. That's the word of God. We don't have to fear anything. Not even the judgment. We don't have to, de to be afraid of hell. Not fear the persecutions and hatreds of Satan against us and our children. But hold on to his word, the double-edged souls. Maintain the worship service according God's words. The rest of your work on this day, the rest of your evil deeds, seek your salvation in Christ. But there is also an invitation. This is the invitation of love. Come to me, all you are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. He doesn't want to leave you in your disbelief. He paid expensively for us with his blood. The Lord is in control. We don't have to fear anything. Amen. Let us pray.